it took forever to do this, maybe a little bit longer than forever. But in somewhere around 2007, I got a visit from a guy that uh, was frenetic. He was in full uniform, he's a colonel, and within a few minutes he realized, besides being a colonel that had done a couple of rounds in you know, Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, he's also a neurosurgeon. And he's very passionate about taking care of his people. And within a few minutes of when we meet Dr. Ling, he's pounding on my conference room table saying, look Dean, at the end of the Civil War, we gave people, soldiers, a wooden stick with a hook on it when they gave their arm you know, to a musket ball. Now it's 150 years later, we give them all sorts of things way more sophisticated than muskets, but maybe an IED or something takes their arm, we bring them back, we give them a plastic stick with a hook on it. He said, that's gonna stop. I was waiting for him to show up with the 1500 pages of the, you know, you always hear about government contracting and all their bureaucracy, and he's gonna give me this big stack of specs that he wants. He had no specs, he just said, you can't pick up a grape with a hook. You can't pick up your three-year-old daughter with a hook. You can't open a door with a hook. So, Dean, all I'm telling you is I want to put something back on these guys that's as close to the original equipment as possible. And I want it to be able to fit on a 50th percentile female frame, so it better be small and light. And it better be capable of picking up a raisin without dropping it. You want it fine motor control and it better be able to pick up a grape without crushing it, so now he wants feedback and sensing. And it better be able to run all day on its own power, so we gotta tuck a lot of batteries into this thing. And it better not weigh more than the original equipment. And then he says, and I want it in two years. I told him he was nuts. Uh, I think he knows he's nuts. But the need is so real, and these people deserve so much. You don't say no to Dr. Ling. So we started this project. And I gotta say, in many ways, it was even more difficult than we thought. But every time we reached a milestone where we realized how much this could improve quality of life, and every time we met somebody when we started, not even the clinical trials, but just talking to people that had clinical need, when we visited Walter Reed, when we visited other places, and we saw many of these very young people with what they had and how inadequate it was, we'd come back energized to Manchester and say, we gotta give Dr. Ling what he asked for. And I think you just saw, we did. And we're very excited by that. I think the unsung hero of this whole thing is DARPA. You know, everybody knows the medical community is gonna implement it. And you just saw people in the clinical world using it. But I doubt too many of these people know of the vision and the courage and the financial resources that DARPA brought to this project. But I think it's safe to say with no exaggeration, there is no chance there'd be anything like this out there today without DARPA. And within DARPA, some of those very, very, very passionate people, like Brett Girard, like Justin Sanchez, like Dr. Ling, this project would not exist without those people.